Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm so, so excited to be speaking with Asha, who's a spiritual and business coach based in Massachusetts. And, you know, one of the things I've loved about Asha is she's prolific as a writer as well. And it's through her writing that I actually found her and met her. I, and, and side note, I know her husband really well, who's a, a brilliant photographer in his own right. But Asha and I connected because her writing was so resonant. It was just really, it, it asked more questions in me than ever before. And I thought, really need to talk to her. So welcome to the show, Asha. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Um, it's kind of fun to hear you say that it made the writing um, made you ask yourself bigger questions because that's kind of what I'm about. Um, and I think the article that you're talking about is that sales always soulful, never dirty or something like that. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, because, you know, one of the things that photographers uh, struggle with, as you probably already know, is the sales part. It feels yucky for some people. And uh, there are ways of approaching it, I think, and, and I think you've hit it uh, all right on the head on that article in terms of how you approach sales. How does it how does it make you feel versus how, you know, how it's uh, I guess how it's practiced in the past. So maybe you can t talk to us a little bit about that article and tell us about your your coaching practice yourself. Yeah, sure. So, you know. It's for me to talk about that sales process that I that I spoke in in that article. Um, you have to know something about me. Is that I was trained as a molecular biologist. I was in business development in the biotech industry, and I was making money for other people. And on the side, I was learning to. I, I mean, I studied to be a minister. I was learning all these healing modalities, and also I was coaching women to have powerful um, inner transformation. And to me, being in front of people is a profound sacred experience. Like that's the way I see it. Um, I don't know why I see it that way, but that's how I am. I'm wired that way. I went to India when I was eight years old, and I just remember thinking like my purpose has been awakened because my job is to help people have better lives i don't know why but this is the way i am and being in a sales role and you know be, having been the primary breadwinner i was really in this career and for me to make sense and make peace with what i was doing as a day job I really had to see it as a spiritual experience and I had to go beyond trainings, beyond tactics, beyond what was being taught, which was like very macho, very manipulative, very much like how do I coax this person to say yes to my thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the blessings I had was that I was really good at anything related to service. Not so much big ticket items, but service and what that brought was that I started developing um, the importance of being in relationship. Okay. So when we are selling, right. we are really um, honoring the relationship. And as you know, I spent four years working with my husband in his mm -hmm. photography business and as a classic artist, and it's not just for photographers who have a hard time with selling. I think right. it's... It's a lot of people. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was this, uh, uh, I would definitely say it was a curriculum that I took him through of being able to show up fully in his talent, fully who he was and what mattered to him and connecting with the people who were going to get his work and were going to value it enough to pay what his level of expertise demanded. And that is a really hard thing for most of us because when we are in that conversation, our stuff comes up, right? Like, maybe my stuff isn't that good. Maybe they don't have the money. Right. Maybe, you know, whatever, whatever it is, our stuff comes up and we forget why we're really there, which is really to create beautiful art and have people witness it and honor us for what it is that we're creating. Absolutely, that's, that's, that's a great explanation. Um, so much of what you've just said uh, seems to me 
is a a mindset shift. Is it more than that? Um, I think mindset definitely helps, right? Because if you walk into a meeting, right. um, you know, showing your beautiful work, and you have this mindset of like, I'm going to be rejected, or uh, maybe my stuff is not good enough. Who else are they talking to? Uh, but you, versus walking into, I really want to connect to the right person. I really want to connect to the right client. I want somebody to honor my work, and I want to provide for my family. Right. Um, mindset helps, but I also I'm very practical, um, <laughs> and I think that if you know if if it's all about mindset and you can create and uh, at materialize your life's desire by meditating and being by a tree, like all power to you. I don't. I have yet to met someone who can do it that way. Um, I think it's important for us to bring a practical element and have a, a sense. Most of us aren't taught how. Most of us aren't taught these practical things about business. But then we have this beautiful talent, and we try to make it into a business that supports us and our family, and we're a little lost. And so I think mindset, yes, but also very, very practical tools of, um, you know, how do we engage in our branding and in our marketing and in our sales process and how do we fulfill? I mean, you have processes in your in your photography, right? You can't just be like, well, I have talent and show up. No, you have some, there's a formula a little bit to what you do when you show up to a wedding or an event or whatever it may be. There's something that you know is important for you to get mm -hmm. and you've also been practicing this for a long time. So it's not just like you have the mindset of a great photographer. So you're talking about a system in a way. It Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, assuming, not assuming, but given that m much of my audience uh, are photographers, uh, would you give us some hints, some tips perhaps where we could get started in terms of getting these strategies and systems in place uh, in terms of sales? Or it could be anything else that you feel is important for us to know right at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, I so my system, if you will, um, it's um, so it's called woman nesting TM. Um, because woman nesting is different than manifesting. So this may sound really woo-woo to a lot of people and like, what the hell is she talking about? Um, but what this really is, is about bringing more balance. Similar to what I was talking about with sales. It's like, okay, if this macho way of, you know, controlling people or manipulating people is not really what is working nowadays, then what is? And I feel like it's really a combination of bringing more uh, soulful aspects and more practical aspects together. So, um, unfortunately, to those who are listening to this and who are like, just get to the heart of it. I want to know how to make more money. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a foundational piece. Sure. And the foundational piece is recognizing that our stuff does come up and having a systematic and elegant way of being able to, um, I mean, for lack of a better term, to heal what comes up. If you know that your worth stuff comes up when you tell someone that you are a photographer and that they should hire you, um, the chances are of you getting what you want out of your business are, are less or are, are not as good as if you are aware of yourself and have an elegant way of, of processing um, what comes up for you. So that's the, the number one piece. And I, I mean, I'm happy to share a link for your audience who's a little bit more open-minded and who wants to explore what this is. And That'd be great. Really, really the way that I... Um, that I see, I don't know if you, have you read Edgar Tolle, uh, Edgar Tolle's The Power of Now? I have, I know who he is. I haven't read the book, unfortunately. Okay, so essentially what I, what I, um, the, the training that I take people through is being able to be in the now and what that really means. Because a lot of people talk about being in the now and most of us have no freaking clue what that means, right? 
but being in the now is an is a constant experience and it's very specific to each person and to the moment and um, you have to train yourself in it basically um, so that's you know that's kind of the first the first piece the second piece is what I was saying about having a practical set of tools and I I like to simplify as much as possible. We live in a complicated world. We do. There's so many things we could be learning about. I mean, you could literally spend all day learning how people market and how, um, you know, all the sales tools that are available out there. I mean, you could spend all day doing that. And what you'll end up doing if you do that is confuse yourself further. So I like to keep it very very simple have a very specific process um, that you take people through and just keep it simple I mean even down to what uh, packages you offer you know when I first started working with Glenn he had this whole beautiful a la carte menu and I was like oh my god if I was your client I'd be like I don't know um, I'd be so confused and I'd be like you tell me but some people don't do that and so the first thing we did is create three packages and create packages that most people, maybe you're, I don't know how you shop, but you, some people always shop and they get like the best item on the list. No matter what it is, no matter how much it costs, they're like, I want the top package. And other people always go for the middle package. And some people always go for the lower package, right? And so you construct packages that keep this in mind and and I would say um, a little tip for photographers is like create a middle package that you know you want to sell more of. Sure. Because most people tend to go there. Right. Absolutely. Um, so that's just like one practical thing. And, and you know, it's, I, um, I don't get to talk about Glenn as much anymore um, because, you know, I, I, I used to coach a lot of photographers, um, but it's, I, he was like my first student. <laughs> <laughs> And it was amazing to watch his transformation sure. from, obviously, he's an incredible photographer. I mean, I, is, I, I mean, just his work is just, to me, is moving. Um, but watching him talk to people and um, how that transformed through the training that I took him through. Um, when I first started working with him, our kids were very little. And I wasn't going with him to the meetings. Like, that's just not what we wanted to do. I wanted to stay home with the kids. I wanted to make sure that they were okay at night. Because, you know, these meetings happen at night. And um, so then after the meeting, he would, um, he would call me. And I'd be like, okay, did you close them? How did it go? How did the conversation go? Like, like step by step everything that happened right and then you know a year after that first time I was like no you should have said this you should have done that that's okay like next time that's what you do and then after a year I uh, ha he had a meeting during the day and I went with him and I was blown away I got I was like you are a freaking master at this and you did it so organically so beautifully and I, I was just like, uh, my job is done. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> so, so do you do you walk uh, other creatives, uh, other solopreneurs uh, through a similar process um, now? Is that what is that what you're uh, called to do, as they would say? Yeah, I have really two kinds of people. Um, I have businesses that are more established uh -huh. um, and require, and basically they're trying to go to the next level in their profitability and, and growing their team and stuff like that. Um, but I do have um, a, a couple of programs that are for people starting out. And in fact, um, very soon, um, I don't know when you're airing this, but um, I there's a free training that I have that's um, called Uncover and Monetize Your Genius. And it's really taking people through what I just told you, mm -hmm. um, including the soulful selling um, process. So, And Wonderful. I'll have that for free so y your, your people can access that. Absolutely. I would love to. would love to link to it and have people uh, sign up for it for sure. Um, there are certain things that uh, 
photographers encounter and i think you as with glenn being so close to you at home you probably see it all the time but uh, and you indic you sort of hinted at it as to there's so many things one can learn online and and you hit it right on the head one can get incredibly distracted and confused by what's out there uh, and the, the next shiny thing that's out there is what people are going for how do you recommend people stay on track i mean focus and, and i think you also talked about uh, a lot of a lot of what you're really referring to is called self-awareness right i mean you yeah. are, you're really are talking about how people should be more self-aware and that's that's sort of a uh, th that seems a little not so much woo woo as you'd call it but it's more sort of like oh wow it's like being a buddha you know like you know that's being self aware to me i mean mm. but being self aware also can it doesn't it is a, is a bit of a process right so and that's the process you're teaching what would you suggest for my tribe my photographers who are following me on on tiffin box what would you suggest to them so i run these beautiful retreat masterminds at the beginning of the year. And the reason I do this is because that's the process I take myself through. And actually, I mean, I have a coach too. Um, and what I love, and I actually, I just uh, did a, an audio for my, for one of my um, mastermind groups. And there's, Having a goal or an intention of what you want to accomplish that year, I find is the most grounding thing. And go, even going down to what social media platforms do you want to perfect and sticking to that. The intent, I mean, it's, it's sort of complicated because it's like, okay, you have these intentions and then somebody like hands you yeah. an Instagram training right. or an opportunity and you're just like, oh, I'm going to go in this direction. That's so you right. want to be open to that too, yeah. mm -hmm. but always going back to what is my original intent. Um, also including what is my financial intent for my business this year. Um, so I would say if you don't have a coach or if you don't have an opportunity to have um, a space, time and space to do this, I would highly recommend that you just take a day beginning of the year. I mean, now, like now it's perfect time to be planning for next year, right? Absolutely. Um, in, in the business world, this is when they start creating budgets for next year. This is when they start setting sales targets, marketing um, agenda. Like this is the time. So mm -hmm. this is perfect. Mm -hmm. So set aside a day and be very clear of what you want to accomplish in the next year. And break it down into quarters and say, okay, what do I want to accomplish? Okay, if my financial uh, goal is... 25,000 for the first quarter, then how, how do I break that down month by month? And what is it that I need to be doing in order to have that 25,000 each month? And it's that reverse engineering. So it's like, what's my intention? Plan it out and reverse engineer on how you get there. And for most of us, we kind of know, I mean, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm you're assuming right. a lot. No, 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 you're right. You're absolutely, <laughs> we, we know, but we don't do. Well, that's where the coach is. It's great to have a coach and have that sense of accountability. That's right. Have that sense of community around something. Um, and going back to what you said about we could chase the next shiny object, um, I would say if you want to make dramatic transformations in your business and really creating something that feels good to you and that you're honored for your talent, follow one person have one teacher and once you have the baseline and reach the goals that you want to reach then explore other things well uh that was fantastic advice really uh it's it's what i probably needed to hear more than anybody else to be honest <laughs> with you because i am very guilty about chasing that shiny object uh whenever it comes up 
Um, I just heard about a new social media platform. Not a social media platform. It's called uh, Blab. I don't know if you've heard I, of it. I'm going on there today. See, there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's fascinating how these new tools are coming out, and you're like, well, I don't want to. I don't want to lose out. You know that feeling like, oh my God, what's going to happen if my audience is there, but I don't. I'm not connecting with them there. That's always that in the back of people's minds. Um, you know, Facebook was was uh, king for a while, and then it went down, and then it's Instagram. Oh, she's my queen. I it love is. Facebook. Oh, I love oh, Facebook too. Yeah. Uh, but but you know what? There 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 are things that you should be doing. People should be doing with Facebook. They are, they aren't doing as much, um, and and they and they give up rather easily and go. Oh, it doesn't work for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Instagram instead. You know, uh, and 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 you're right. It does take a considerable amount of effort and time uh, and resources to learn uh, a platform. And you know, and it's just a platform. It's you know, I would rather have people uh, essentially connect with other people face to face first mm, mm. more. And I'm finding it's in fact more, I don't want to use the word profitable, but it, in a way it is, you know, where people go, Oh, say she is a photographer, you know, versus say she who's on Facebook and then he's a photographer. You know what I mean? So that mm-hmm. th- they don't need to jump around that much. And it gives them a real clear indication of what I do and how I do it when I meet with them. Um, Asha, you uh, and I uh, talked before we started recording about how, or rather, who you serve, and and you said that you said that most of your clients are women, but there are a few men in your in your group as well. Tell us a little bit about these guys who are part of your group. <laughs> um, well, there. So you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and when I first started, I was definitely only focused on women, mm-hmm. like helping women with personal transformation. Then I moved into this like uh, personal transformation and business profit uh, and business planning. And throughout the years, I've always had that one man who's like, "I loved your article," or you know, "Do you work with men?" And it was like, "No, no, not right now, not right now." And in the past couple of years, I've just said, "You know what? Screw it." If like that's what is in front of me, and if this, you know, if this is where I'm supposed to go, then I'm open to it. Um, so the men, I always say, they're heart centered. Um, meaning that they're a little bit more open-minded, you know, they're a little bit more open to um, exploring that self-awareness piece that you talked about and that authenticity piece that you talked about. Actually, your friend Mark Higgins was one of my first. um, He he took one of my classes um, a few years ago. Okay. And, you know, you wouldn't think that he's, like, heart-centered, but he got so much out of that work. And I, you know, it really, like, touched me because, you know, when you see people who it seems like, I mean, he's a dad, so he's, like, very likable. He's got that whole thing. But is he, like, spiritual? Maybe not. But he went through that process and got so much out of it. And I thought, this is really fascinating. The way that we can impact people and the way this work, the self-awareness thing that feels like, oh, you have to be a Buddha to do that, um, can be so normalized for all of us, really. Excellent. Uh, Asha, you can be found online at ashaisnow.com. Is there any other resource or a link that you'd like to recommend at this time? Yes. Um, So this training that I'm doing, the Uncover and Monetize Your Inner Genius, it's a free training. And I'm so excited to be offering this, to be in a place where I can give back. And that link is ashaisnow.com forward slash genius, genius dash start dash here. And if you go there, you will be taken through, uh, I think, five video training on how to stop the inner critic, how to uncover your inner genius, how to create a, a business plan and pricing structure that's right for you, and that soulful selling piece. Um, wow. So, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. That's great. <laughs> I'm really excited about this because it's so it's just fun to be able to like have this all this that I've been working on for so many years and have it be condensed and um, have people be able to have access to it. It's really fun. Awesome. So. Awesome. You know, one of the things I've always been curious about is this, uh, this 
merging of ideas of, of spirituality and business. And you've brought both together and you're teaching both together. I'm just curious why that is such an important thing uh, for, for, for everybody to really follow. Yeah. So for me, it's who I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I'm wearing my branding uh, in every way possible. Um, but also what I've been able to observe in our economy is that business for the sake of making money is outdated. Mm. And we have been trained to get jobs or we have been trained to create businesses that make money, um, and especially for creative people and people who want to contribute to the planet in a positive way, that's not enough. And this piece of being self-fulfilled and being and feeling like my life is great. I am contributing in a positive way. I am being who I am, who I was created to be, and I'm making money. That is heaven on earth for me. Absolutely. That is Absolutely. that is it. Absolutely. I get to be who I am. I get to feel good about what I do, and I'm getting paid what I need or what I want to provide for myself and my family. I can't imagine I can't imagine that we're moving away from that. <laughs> and so that's why I am passionate about this movement because I think that we all deserve that. Absolutely, absolutely. One last question, and yes. you, when we were talking before, you mentioned something about how people see the value in what you do and and are willing to pay you for it. This is, I think, another sticking point for a lot mm. of photographers is that they are afraid to do the sale or make the sale or even ask for the sale only because they feel that their own work it may not be valued by their clients what do you say to them oh my gosh have you seen that video by ira glass that one where he talks about like okay you came into this work because you have this like critical thinking or critical eye and you look at your artistic work or whatever work it is that you do and you're like okay it's good but it could be better right right? so you as a creative person you're always going to have that edge of like i could evolve i could be better and at the same time um you we also need to recognize that our work if we put in the the time if we put in those 10,000 hours of <laughs> mastery right? right right um our work deserves to be seen for what it is and i will say that you know part of why i'm passionate about what i do is because i know people need me to believe in them like we all need that we all need that person that we respect, that we revere, that is doing great, and who says to us, what you do matters. And we all need some of that. Sure. I mean, ultimately, we have to believe it too, right? right. And in the process of ultimately believing it, it the, the support of a cheerleader or you know, someone, beyond a cheerleader, but someone who really is there to... Um, to feed us when we're not feeling fed. Um, yeah, it's it's an important part to own your level of mastery. And and I'm all about, like, I am not, I know there's so many people who, like, buy a professional camera and they're like, I'm a photographer. Let me charge $4,000 for this wedding package. And you're just like, oh, my God, like, learn your lighting. Like, even for me, like, I see it and I'm like, oh, my God, like, come <laughs> on, right? Like, I've learned from my husband. You're not ready for that. Um, so I think honoring. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Glenn say that. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't say that. I, I'm the one that I'm like, do you believe this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I think pricing your services at the level where you are is important. And some of us are, in, and I go over this in the in the course, by the way, we can be in portfolio building stage, mm-hmm. which is like if you're new to this and you just bought your first pr- professional camera, do not charge $4,000. People are going to be pissed at the work that they're getting back. And you will not feel good and you will probably quit doing photography. Start at that portfolio building pricing. That place where you're trying to get testimonials, where you're trying to get a decent portfolio 
and perfecting and having the critique. And I think you guys do this in such a beautiful way. The photography community, at least here in New England, it's like you guys do that mentoring piece. That's right. Um, and I think it's really, really important to have that. And then when you have reached a certain level, asking for what that value is really asking for that level that you have cultured for yourself right um is and it's maybe it's hard for us as um artistic people sometimes to know when that place is mm -hmm. and maybe why i also think like that mentoring and coaching relationship is is helpful because someone who will nudge you and kind of push you to your edge of saying like you're ready and another little tidbit on that is that when we raise our prices our rates we're really asking for greater excellence of ourselves and greater excellence of the kind of clients that we attract wow yeah that is fantastic that is so true Folks, this is Asha. She's a spiritual and business coach. You've got to listen to her. You've got to read her. Her, her essays are incredible. Um, I would recommend, highly recommend you go check her out on ashaisnow.com. I'll have a link, obviously, in the post uh, right underneath this uh, video. But, I, I, you know, this is, this is good stuff. This is the stuff that you need to even get started. I mean, most people start with a camera in hand and go out and make pictures. And that's great. But this is important. This is the business side of things that if you don't take care of, you won't be in business very long. You know, and this is good stuff. So, Asha, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's such my pleasure. Thank you. You know, it's um, photographers have obviously a sweet place in my heart. I figured. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in more than one way. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm delighted to be here and be connecting with your community. So thank you for inviting me to your community. Okay.